A little while ago, I found an old memory stick. Now this memory stick was the very first one I ever had. It replaced my old floppy disk that I would bring my homework in on, because I'm that old, uh, <laughs> apparently. And on this memory stick, I had three Word documents amongst a few other files, but these three Word documents are the important things. They were some stories that I wrote as a teenager. Three stories. I think the oldest would have been about when I was just starting high school, about 11, 12, uh, and the most recent of them probably being about the age of 15. So these would have been written from about 2002 to about 2006. So I thought when I found them, this would be a really fun thing to react to at some point in a video, read my old stories, embarrass myself, great. And I'm gonna do that, don't worry, it's coming. But I thought what might be more interesting is using one of these stories as a base and trying to rework it as an adult with more matured taste and experience of reading different kinds of stories and try and make something more half decent out of it. I'm not gonna say good, I'm not gonna put myself onto any, <laughs> this is it's not gonna be great. But my plan is, it's NaNoWriMo next month, National Novel Writing Month, which is a time when a lot of people challenge themselves to write 50,000 words of a novel. And I thought that might be a good opportunity to do this little challenge. So why not? I'm super busy anyway. Why not just add writing a load of a story? Uh, why not? <laughs> I'm gonna regret this. I am thinking I'm gonna see which ones you guys are most interested in and I will let that affect my decision. I'm not gonna say I'm putting this to a vote because this channel is not a democracy. This is the dictatorship of Jules Sender and what I say goes, but I will take on board <laughs> what you think sounds the most interesting. And it'd be interesting to know as well. So I'm gonna go through these three stories with you and let me know which one you like the sound of and next video, I will be starting to rework one of them. I'm gonna start on the one that I wrote when I was oldest because it's the least terrible. We'll work our way down uh, in quality. <laughs> so, and this one actually, I still have the original handwritten version, which is not that similar to the one that I have on my computer. This is like an original draft. I've got, I've got doodles. It's, this is great. This was written, this was written on my lunch breaks at the end of classes when I finished my work, that kind of thing and then typed up when I got home on my computer. I have already reread all the stories, but I'm going to cut to past me from yesterday, who has not experienced these yet. So you can get some reactions of me reading the first couple of pages of each of them, and then I will summarize the rest of the story. So over to you, Jules from yesterday. <laughs> Hi, so I have got these beautiful stories on my computer. So let's get reading. I think what I'm going to do is just read you a little bit from the start of each of them and then maybe a little snippet here and there if I read ahead. They're quite long, some of these are quite long. I do not have the time to make a video where I'm reading a, a 7,000 word, a 20,000 word and 23,000 word document. That's, that's a lot, that's a lot. So I'll just read some little bits for you. We'll see how it goes. So we're opening with a dream. Good, good start. Um, I'm not going to read this bit out because I don't think it's particularly interesting, but I think I had just read the first few books of Darren Shan's Demonata, um, because this is very much ripping off what happens to the main character in the first book during, yeah, his like trauma with seeing some demons. I snapped awake, soaked in sweat and the duvet knotted around me. Taking a deep breath, I reached over to my lamp and the room was suddenly filled with a comforting yellow glow. Hi, my name is Amber and that is the nightmare I have about the day my parents died. <laughs> oh, it's, I love it. Oh, for all the wrong reasons. Of course, it wasn't like that. My dad wasn't ripped to pieces by a shadow. He committed suicide after my mum was killed in a mugging. <laughs> Just casually, it's fine. Okay, so we've got a senile great aunt Betty, who was not appropriate as a carer, so she was put into foster care. All right. And then just some after that, just, well, now that I have sufficiently depressed you, I hope you won't stop reading. Oh, gold. And, well, back to that day in October. Eventually, I got back to sleep. 
but what I really want to do is start my tail later that day during dinner, then just get there. Like, you don't need, you don't explain a time jump. <laughs> I found myself trapped in fifth period English lesson with Miss Phillips, the most boring woman you could possibly imagine. She was waffling on about some poem that she clearly found as boring as we did. I didn't like English class at school very much. I liked to just write what I wanted to write. I didn't, I didn't like being told what to write. A girl to my right had her MP3 player on so loud. I'm sure people next door could hear it. Oh, MP3 players, good times. It was a place, to, a place we used to go when we were kids. It was by the river and we always felt completely separate from the world. It was surrounded by ancient oak trees leaning over the water, protecting us with their branches. I was right, it was right on a bend. The outside was so deep we didn't think we'd be able to touch the bottom even now. There were several large bo- Is that me just throwing in I know how rivers form and oxbow lakes and things? Because I'm doing geography. Is that what that is? I think that's what that is. <laughs> oh dear. Alex insisted he remembered the way, so we followed him. After about 20 minutes, he admitted that he was completely lost. After a short argument about his incompetence and orienteering, we managed to backtrack to a farmer's field that we knew. So we got lost and now we know where we are again. Great. Oh no, I hate, I hate this talking to the audience thing. I know what you're thinking. Is that it? The amazing event that changed everything? Well, I'm sure that you'll be glad to know that it isn't. That's about to come in a few moments. Patience is a virtue. <laughs> Oh, God. Although I'll never know for sure, I think we must have been about halfway back to the campsite when it happened. I heard some rustling to my left. It was rather windy, so I didn't think anything of it. Then I heard a twig snap, and another. Animals are everywhere, right? I just assumed that they were running away from us. What really caught my attention was the growl. Did you hear that? I asked the terrible cliché. <laughs> oh, at least I knew. At least I knew. So, my general feeling with this story, with Amber, is that it has potential. There's not very much in the actual writing that I've got that explains the world and the backstory, but I do still remember a fair bit of what I was intending with this and how the world worked. So it was basically that there is another plane of existence that is ruled by demons. They send, the powerful demons send their little minions through. I believe it was something like there were portals that only like small weaker creatures can pass through so the bigger monsters couldn't come across to our world and all that sort of thing so the big bads are all on the other side they send through their minions there's a group of people who fight back against the demons and um the main characters find themselves thrown into this world um there's there were a group of the big bad demons gods possibly i'm not quite sure what the full intention of them was but three of them a long time ago defected decided they didn't want to be bullying humans and tormenting them anymore, they were done with that, they had grown beyond or something, and those uh, demons came over to our world in a weakened form. Uh, they reincarnate one at a time into these people who fight back, so there's always one of them around on Earth who is able to help the humans to fight back against the demons. Um, and then it turned out that the three main characters in this, the the main character Amber and her two siblings are reincarnations of the three of these all at once, all on the earth at the same time, which means some big bad stuff's about to happen. So that was the general concept. So this one had the most thought as to a plot of all the ones I've written. The others were just a concept of this is cool, let's have fun with that. So yeah, that is Amber. Let's move on to the next one, which is Argentia. So yeah, this opening scene is her heading back to the village, having collected a bucket of water. And I don't know why the water source for this village is so far away from the village. This seems like a very poor decision for anyone setting up a settlement. But here we go. Um, I think I will just skim past this. There, sees a wolf. She manages to kill it. Uh, yeah, I fired the arrow, it flew towards her and shot her right in the head. She was dead in an instant. But, um, yeah. I mean, the wolf probably wasn't going to just try and kill you, like, from what I understand of wolves, they don't just see humans and attack, like... But anyway. So, I continued walking down the hill, almost spilling my water several times. I was worried the flame in my lantern would go out, but it was stronger than it appeared. I was ten minutes from the village when I felt it. A drop of rain landed on my nose. Another thing I knew well, that the end elders had hammered into my head since a small child. If you were caught in a rainstorm, get inside as soon as you can, or you can easily drown when a path becomes a riverbed. Heavy rain in this region? 
lost my lantern. Bad choice. Ankle deep in water, there's just a flood. Like this, ooh, the drama. Cool, got trapped against a cliff, climbing up the cliff. And then I felt something grab my wrist. I looked up to see Jance pulling, pulling me up. There's terrible names in this. Uh, a wave of relief came over me. Jance is one of my best friends in the village. He's looked out for me since I was a little kid. It's always making me laugh and getting me out of trouble. So as soon as we get inside, what took you so long, Argentia? Young Jant saw you running along the Lower Eastern Path. How could you be that stupid when you should have felt the storm hours ago, girl? And where is our water? You dropped it, she screamed at me as I fell to the floor and scrambled backwards. Speak, you insolent child. I don't know why I made the mother be so cruel, like aggressively cruel. Like if I wanted it to be like that she cared more about the brothers, like just having her being dismissive and ignoring would feel a lot more realistic to me. But anyway, she's just, you know, why not? Oh, we got the brothers' names right. I glanced over at Rit, Callin, and Froas. <laughs> oh, and the dog's name is Lazarus. And she sleeps in the attic. Cool, got a little bit of a Harry Potter in the cupboard under the stairs vibe there. Cool. <laughs> I felt around for my candles and found them next to my table. I say table, but I really mean pile of firewood. I picked one candle up and shoved it into a holder. I concentrated on a feeling of warmth in my hands, then saw a small glow from my fingertips. I touched the wick of the candle, and it caught a light almost instantly. It's called heat sinking. Heat seeking. I've seen the council members do it before. Okay, so in this version, there is magic that others use. Okay. Only a few on the council have the ancient gift. It was meant to come with wisdom, but I've, only, I've been doing it in secret for years. Sometimes I can light something without actually touching it. If Mother ever found out, I don't know what I'd do. I'm always afraid of someone finding out about it. I haven't even told Jance or Sarith. Who's Sarith? Have I, have I skimmed over and missed who's Sarith? <laughs> even though they're my best friends. No, I've missed this. Uh, <laughs> I cannot risk us being overheard or one of them letting it slip. Gossip travels fast in a small village. Okay, so there is some form of magic that is normally used. Okay. You know what? These aren't as bad as I thought they would be. Though I am working backwards to the one that I wrote first and leaving that for last, so you know. So this one is a more like typical fantasy sort of medieval world sort of style to it. Uh, the main thing of the world is that there are some magic users which are generally considered by the public to be evil, that they do nasty things. Nothing really comes up in what I've written that explains exactly why people feel like this, but they, they do. Um, and then the main characters, again, the self-insert, very much me but cooler character um, and her siblings are um, drawn into this, start to learn how to use the magical powers, then they're told that the bad guy magic users are not bad guy magic users, that they help defend the world from some kind of existential threat. Um, we have no proof of this other than one of them telling them that. I don't know if my intention was that they are actually evil and they were tricked into joining this evil magic group or whether they are actually good and the freedom fightery rebellion that they were originally planning on joining when they were old enough are actually the bad guys. I have no idea what the plan was with this. I have no recollection. Uh, I do just remember that I changed the magic system at some point. I don't remember what it originally was, but now it's like there's the four elements and everyone first learns how to use fire and then they work out how to use the next one. I didn't, I had a great surprise when reading this that the ma magical power from water is getting gills so you can breathe underwater. Why you need a physical thing to breathe underwater when everything else is just crazy magic, I don't know. That, that threw me. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. So my, ma my, my main notes on this one is a lack of understanding of how the world works. So I've got like, why does she start the opening section traveling presumably an incredibly long distance from the sound of it to get water? And then we find out that the village is built on a river bend and floods all the time. Can we not get water from the river? Is it is there a problem with that for some reason? Yeah, she, like when they go to the city, she's just suddenly just afraid of leaving the village. But then every other time when they talk about doing anything like joining the rebellion and then later on going with the warders, she's all up for it. So I don't quite understand what, what's going on with her character there. Um, the pacing, the pacing, it's so slow to start with. Nothing is happening. We've got pages and pages of just her living a normal life. And then suddenly it's like, boom, we're going to the city. Oh, we've met the warders. Oh, we're learning magic. And then it just stops. So last but not least, we have a Freindra's Tale. Ah, oh, the running theme of terrible names for things. I, I don't even know. 
Like, I think I thought that in fantasy stories, when there are fictional names, that people just make up a word that sounds good. And I'm sure some people do. But usually there's some thought, there's a process, there's, you know, something, uh, at least in the good ones. So, a Frindra's tale. So Frindra is a really awful word that uh, is the name of the sort of elf-like creatures that um, feature in this story. So this is set in the real world where there is a secret society of magic using elfy people. Um, generally, they just, they cr they're just made from, you know, you are born to parents who are of that species, race, I don't know what it's supposed to be. But occasionally, someone who is human is like chosen and becomes one of them and that's what this is about um this i know is going to be bad so here we go um <laughs> i was 13 at the time just 13. i guess it all started late at night when i was sitting in my bed with a textbook in front of me trying to memorize all the dates of various battles in the civil war for my history homework i've been there for half an hour and nothing had sunk in I'd heard the fourth step on the staircase crease as someone stepped on it, and immediately tuned my ears into the footfalls. Mum, I whispered as I recognised the sound. A few seconds later the handle turned and my mum walked into the room. There is no relevance of this character being able to recognise people's footsteps and know who it is. That is that is not important. 100%. So mum took me to the library the next day. I was looking forward to it, but I would have to spend the day, in, spend the day there as mum was in work, but books never fail to entertain me. Once I look back at that moment and I wonder, I wonder if mum hadn't been working that day or if she hadn't thought to take me to the library. I've used the wrong two every single time. <laughs> it doesn't take me long to find the teenage fiction section. No, I wasn't new to the library. I was just new to the layout. <laughs> Don't you find it really annoying when they do that? I'm bored. I think I'll move all these books around so no one can find anything. That'll be fun. And then they complain that no one uses libraries anymore. What is this? I ran my hand slowly over the spines of the book, taking in their titles before moving on to the next. Each cover held an incredible story within its pages, a tale just waiting for someone to release it from its papery prison <laughs> and escape into another's mind, never to be forgotten. Oh, you'll forget all the stories that you read as a teenager, young Jules, don't you worry. My hand touched a book. It felt different to the others. The spine was bound in leather. It felt like it had been sitting there on the shelf for years, collecting dust and the ink fading. The feel awakened something in my mind, like I'd felt this book before and I'd forgotten the joy of its story. I gripped the book gently and slowly removed it from its claustrophobia. It, sl it slid off the bookshelf smoothly and I felt the full weight of the book for the first time. It was heavier than I'd expected. The leather binding was rather smooth, but worn in places. If it had been dyed any colour when made, it had faded and now was a dull brown. I also noticed that whoever had bound this book had some incredible skill. I know about bookbinding, apparently. <laughs> I opened up to the first page, and what must have been a ton of dust fell out. I coughed three times as it blew in my face. Is that significant? I don't know. I had to wave my hand in front of me so I could breathe. Jesus, how much dust came out of this? Was it the dust? Is the dust the magical thing? I couldn't understand how this book could be in such poor condition. They just reorganised the library, for goodness sake. Wouldn't it have been cleaned? I closed the cover and found something else I hadn't noticed before. Okay, fair play. So that bit about the library being reorganised actually had a point. Okay. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> First of all, um, this has a lot of I'm not like other girls. And I'm so, like, this says, says so much about how I was as a teenager. I, oh, like, literally saying, like, don't like hanging out with girls because all they do is talk about hair and nails and boys and just like, oh, oh. 12 year old me, no. The reusing of names, you may very well notice, if you take a look at this story, that a key character in this is called Argentia. So I obviously decided this name was far too cool for some other character to have. The self-insert character will have this name in my next story. <sighs> also, the surname is the same as the uh, lead character of Argentia in Argentia's story. Um, just, I don't know what alt-right is, where I came up with this word, what it meant to me, I don't know why I keep reusing it, just, there we go. We've got sort of spirit animal things going on, which, you know, little bit, little, a uh, bit yikes, but you know, um, could be worse. Um, I don't know what to say about the whole searching 
inside her subconscious and there's like the old man with the accent. I don't know what to say other than I'm very sorry if this has offended anybody because I, I don't, I don't know why. I don't know why this is there and I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Oh, I very much enjoyed the inclusion of the line, you're a seer, Tom. Just gave me a good chuckle. Good chuckle. <laughs> oh, it's just, it's just, this was painful. This was so painful to read. This is a 12 year old who has read quite a few books at this point and has just decided to just pick things from all these different stories and not quite understanding why they work or what they mean. And it's all just a bit, it's a bit weird. It's like complete change of idea of what's going on. We've got randomly just like, oh, we're bringing this character back in, even though we've not mentioned them for a while. They're suddenly important. And it's, oh, there's just, there's a lot. There's a lot going on in this. So you've now got a summary of these three stories. You can probably tell I am not inclined to do anything with a friendress tale. I don't think I can make that into something decent without completely stripping it back and starting again and I'm not sure I desperately want to do that. I think the others have more potential, so I'm probably leaning towards either Argentia or Amber. But if you would like to have some input, feel free to let me know which one you like the sound of. And if you are interested, I will include in the description links to the Google Docs for these three stories so you can read them yourself and laugh at my teenage self. Please don't. Please don't laugh. <laughs> she tried so hard. <laughs> I think that's all that I have to say on that. Um, yes, let me know. I will hopefully be coming back with another video in a week or two with some stuff about what I'm planning and a bit of world building changing, presumably, and some character stuff and actually sitting down and doing like character sheets and like trying to work out who these people are rather than them just be a self insert, but cooler. Because that's not fun for anyone really, is it? That's just not in not compelling as a protagonist. So Right. I hope that you've had fun laughing at that. Um, I have. I have had quite the ride. So I'm just really glad that I kept these files, that I decided to back up my old floppy disk and that I stuck a load of old USB sticks in a box and I found them again. So I'm happy. Right. Thanks for watching. There will hopefully be another one of these videos soon. If you want to check out other sort of stuff that I make, I've got some stuff here probably, uh, some various videos. Hopefully I'll keep regular uploads and I'm sure there'll be some stuff that I'm doing that isn't related to writing if that doesn't interest you. But I'm gonna give this a go. Yeah, cool. I'm really bad at ending videos. I always have been and it's not changed. <laughs>